Welcome to Getting Started with AL Go for GitHub. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, one of the new things that we kind of got together with version 21 um, is AL Go for GitHub. So AL Go is the command that you create, no, as the command in Visual Studio you, you use to create a new, uh, a new app, a new extension. Uh, project files and all that good stuff but for github meaning that you'll also get uh, everything connected you'll get a, a pipeline and all sorts of stuff and and microsoft has done a lot of work in this and um let, let's try it out shall we um and this actually starts let me make sure that actually if i'm able to find something here bingo this starts on github well, it's for GitHub, you start on GitHub. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I am on github.com slash Microsoft. <laughs> wow, this is going to be a weird video. Uh, Microsoft slash AL dash go dash PTE. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, show you later on wh where I actually got that from. But this is where I start. This is. This is known as a template in uh, in GitHub lingo, um, and this is for managing a pertinent extension for Business Central. Um, and um, in order to get started, you need to have a GitHub ac account. Of course, you need to be logged in as GitHub. I am. You can see my thingy up here. So I will use this template, um, and. Then it asks you for a name for the repository. So we call this a algo, algo GitHub. How about that? That's a good name. Algo, al dash go for GitHub testing. And you know, whenever you create a new a new repository, always make it private until you are sure that hey this needs to be public and and i i'm sure the stuff in it is for public consumption and so on so you don't suddenly by mistake while you are uh, doing stuff you 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 make something that should perhaps be a secret public so always start by private then you can make it public if it is public, yeah, you can make it private. But hey, it was public, so all all the there's there's like those bots that the only thing they do is that whenever something new shows up on GitHub, they download it uh, and they look for you know Azure keys and other keys, AWS keys and passwords and all that good stuff. Anyway, I will create this repository from the, the template. So this should only take a few seconds generating your repository. And hopefully, there we go. We got hogart slash al go github. So that's perfect. Generated from Microsoft al dash go dash pt. That's perfect. So I got this. Next step is to actually get this into. Um, no, it's not. Next step is actually. Sorry. I, I need to remember that they're all of this too. Now I want to go to actions. And uh, in actions, there is a bunch of workflow actions already here. The one I'm interested in is create a new app. And you can see there's a bunch of other things that we can do, but, but we're trying to do the simple. This is, is the simple one. So I select this and this says, this workflow has a workflow display event trigger. I have no idea what that is, but I'm gonna run it anyway. Uh, and now stuff happens under my head, which is not that good. So let me actually resize the screen just a bit. So I need to fill out something here. Project name if the repository is set up for multiple projects. Otherwise, I will ignore that. So we call this Algo Baby. That's the name of our app. Maybe we should say Algo GitHub. GitHub, baby. Uh, publisher, that's me. ID range, I want this to reside in 95,600 to 95. 
780. Include sample code? Sure. Direct commit? Yes, please. According to the documentation. So I say run this workflow. And this workflow has not no runs yet, which is kind of weird. No, there we go. Create a new app. Manual run. Now queued. Uh, and sometimes GitHub pages are updating. Sometimes they're not. Uh, 23 seconds ago in progress. I just hit a five again because I am Mr. Impatient Man tonight. 35 seconds, 36 seconds. Man, come on. Come on, get up. You're faster than this. One minute. Wow. Did it just jump from something to one minute? So that's not really, that's like plus minus one minute. Well, we got a new app very, very, very soon. Uh, some some of these things you gotta you know gotta, gotta have more patience than than I have. Uh, uh, no, hang on, we're done. Wow, I, I'm so. I'm just hitting a fire. I didn't see that it was actually done. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now, if I go to code, I can see that I actually got my AL Go GitHub baby uh, thing here. Let's look at it. There's Hello World and App, and, and this is all beautiful. Uh, there's a README that you get from a template, so you can change that if you want. But now let's get out of GitHub. And we can do that by grabbing the URL here and go into VS Code and find the git clone command. Paste in the URL. Uh, go, baby. Create a folder for this. And now it's cloning behind me. So we would like to open this, yes. And I completely trust myself. And now behind my face here, ask me to open the workspace. I do that. Okay. So now you have, well, now you have two choices. From Microsoft's perspective, from my perspective, we actually got three choices, but, uh, and I'm gonna select choice number three. So now, now Freddy is already getting, uh, hang on, what is he doing? Uh, anyway, so so now we need something to run this on. So we have kind of an app here, or at least the, the beginning of an app here. Um, we got two PowerShell commands. We got uh, let's, don't do that. We got a local dev environment that will create a, a, a container for you. We got a cloud dev environment that will create a place in the cloud for um, for building uh, building your apps but and and if you don't have anything then you got to run one of these to get a business central environment but if you have one and you're re reusing it anyway for everything like I am I'm just gonna totally shortcut this and head down to my app here and in the launch.json I'm going to hit behind myself. There's a function called add configuration. I will publish to my own server. And I know my server is called something like BC21. And now that I have that, so, so you see, this is a workspace. Let's actually cover that for a second. So you can have multiple apps open. So we have like AL Go folder here with, with stuff, settings and names and whatever. Uh, and then we have our app. So in order for the AL compiler, the AL thing inside Visual Studio Code to know that it should, one, know that it should work, uh, react to that it should what is your react on? You need to make sure that you have like a file from that app open. Uh, so like if I open hello world here and we can, hello, 
GitHub world. Let's do that. Now that because I have this open, I can say download symbols and it knows that, hey, you're in this app. And and suddenly you can see we got ale packages. We got symbols here. And uh, since I do have the Docker container already uh, mentioned in here, I can... Oh, and now we're getting errors. So here's here's uh, here's something. So we're actually getting an error that when we try to publish the app we just created, and uh, this is because the version of the AL extension inside uh, Visual Studio Code. If I go here and I select my AL language, then we can see that this is. Go to the change log, remove the error from saying that we are on 10.1. But Business Central 10.1 is not released yet. So only Business Central 10, aka version 21, is released. So the app.json file that was created with ALGO GitHub does not have in all you see all the fancy kind of weird format. We can we can actually see if we can get this format better. We can't. It's missing the the runtime setting, telling what runtime you're running on. So now if I do this again, I can publish my app to the latest and greatest version of Business Central, which is 10.0 in this case, not 10.1. Uh, so be aware of that and just make sure, and, and we can see that I actually had another one. So hello, GitHub world, we, we got that. That is perfect. Um, okay, so we got an app. We have tested it locally, everything works. So what, what's next? Well, what's next is that let's commit our changes. So, and the changes we have made, let's actually just uh, take a look at those. We messed with the hello world. We added GitHub, so that's, that's great. We added a configuration to a launch.json, pretty good. And in this case, we updated uh, our, our app.json to have the right runtime. We could also, see it's kind of, uh, and then, then so you, Microsoft's not, not specifying runtime, but they are specifying your application, which would result in, in, in potentially in apps that would not work because you would allow it to get um, get symbols from a, a version 21 and you would say that it runs version 19 and then you might use something in system application that is not available on a 19 and uh, anyway that it, it's it's a mess so so be aware of these settings that that they are correct from, from what you want to do. Anyway, so any commit needs a very meaningful commit message. So uh, uh, go, go, go. That's a pretty good commit message. So I commit that, I sync it, and then it's time to, as soon as this one is synced, come on. Then it's time to uh, head back to um, GitHub. So where is our thing? Our thing is here. So now we can go and we can see that we got, I think actually if we do an F5 here, we can see that then uh, those three commits. So we just committed something 31 seconds ago. But if I go to actions now, we can see that there's not a workflow running already called go, 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 which was our commit message. Um, so now we can take a look at this one because as soon as I push something to the repo, then a build is triggered. Um, and what is happening? Well, there's, we got initialization and then it goes into two jobs, a check for update job and build. After build, we got deliver and deploy and post process. Um, and we see initialization is done and check for updates are going. So now 
the pipeline is building our thing. And this will take a while. And for us not to look at this all the time, I, uh, I had another one here. Uh, so this one actually completed. Uh, we can see that this one is going now. So we got, we got actually we got 11 warnings. The set output command is, is deprecated and will be disabled soon. Um, so I'm not sure why I get something brand new and then I get no JS 12 actions are deprecated. Uh, and then, yeah, anyway. Uh, so we see that initialization is running, check for updates running. If, I, if we click on something, then we can see what actually happened in here. So it's checking for container version, uh, container helper version, and your repository run on the latest version of Elco system. All of that is good. Uh, if I go back to one that already ran, we can see that in in the build job we got a bunch of stuff that actually happened here um, so pulling generic creating container resolving dependencies compiling app publishing app copy to build artifacts move container all these things happened um, and uh, this one is still running so so now now we started now we are now we actually uh now we're now we're actually going somewhere else. but but this one will run for uh, for a while so let me actually show you where i got this one because i, I think i promised that at the beginning and um microsoft slash al dash go and there's a readme file in so the problem no, sometimes the problem with you see we got you you open up a, a, a repo and then you just get a bunch of files and unless you remember to scroll down and see what's in the readme you might not see the readme um, so what we have been doing here is basically the one number one user scenario number one create a new pretend and extension um so we did all all these things, um, and and we even looked at at, at uh, all this, um, but there's way more. There's way more. So add a test app, uh, register customer sandbox environments uh, for continuous deployment using service-to-service uh, -service authentication. Create a release of your application. Register a customer production environment for manual deployment, update Elgo system files, key vaults for secret, uh, and on and on and on. So there's a bunch of scenarios here and they're, they're very well documented. So register a customer production environment. We go through this. Oh, well, this one is, is actually shorter than <laughs> you would want. So great example. So some of this is not very long anyway. Um, so go explore and, uh, and, and, and let me know what you want me to, uh, to show next. So now we kind of get started and, 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 and this was way less scary than, than you would think. Um, so what do you want me to do with this one next? Should we create multiple apps should we set up like you know pipelines to deploy automatically uh, let me know in the comments below what you want uh, want me to do with this one and uh, when you're done commenting and make sure you're subscribed and all that good stuff check out this video that's a good one i'll see you there take care bye